Hey guys, Curious Hobbies here. Today, I'll be modifying a Mac game called Bejeweled 3 of the Match 3 game series Bejeweled. So let's get right into it. First, I'll right click it and select Show Package Contents. In the Content slash Resources folder, the file that got my attention the most is this main.pak file. P-A-K. What is this file type? Apparently, an archive used by video games like Quake, Hexen, Crisis, Far Cry, and Half-Life. And of course, Bejeweled 3, apparently. It may include graphics, objects, textures, sounds, and other forms of data packed into a single file. P-A-K files are often a renamed zip file. More info, PAK files are mostly used by video games, but might also be used by other applications like Chrome. The format for these files used in certain games might differ from others. Therefore, you may have to try using multiple programs before you're able to open the PAK file. However, it also has a list of programs that are meant to open these files below. And here, it only listed Windows programs. So, I don't know exactly how I would open this. I have tried changing the file extension to zip, with not really any luck. Then I tried just opening it, and got a window like this. However, there is another way of opening and viewing a file's contents. The fact is, every file is really made of data, which could be seen in two ways. One, as binary data. This means every unit in the data is either of two, on or off, written to or not, or filled or not filled. Really, any way you want to look at it. This is the smallest unit that is actually part of the file. Now, the storage device that holds them is made of real materials, which are made of things like atoms and molecules on a deeper scale. However, those are not part of the file. The second way of seeing it is in bytes, i.e. segments of binary data, which is multiple binary units in length. For instance, Combining eight zeros or ones expands the possibility from either of two things to 256 combinations. And these could be tied to letters, numbers, and other characters. Okay, so you might think, how are different file types categorized? Like audio, images, and of course, archives like this one. Well, the answer is their file extension. For instance, mp3 is an audio example and JPG is an image example. This is that dot at the end of a file name followed by an extension defining the file type. Also, viewing the file as bytes really means viewing the file as plain text. So then, I right clicked it and chose Apple's text edit under open width. Which by the way, it says default at the end there. So why didn't opening it open it in text edit in the first place? Anyways, now I'm actually viewing the file in its semi-pure form as plain text. And this actually seems legible. These seem like they might be folder paths. They start with one or more words, like affirmations here. Maybe those are folder names, separated by these slashes, and the one that follows the last slash has a file extension. However, where are these folders and files? Well, probably somewhere in the game when it's running. So let's scroll down a bit. Okay, the text here is not very legible. For a flash though, I did see something really legible. So let's go back up to make sure I'm not seeing things. And I'm not here, because there is some text here that's clearly readable. In fact, this stuff is in the game's zen mode. Under the condition that you have mantra set on, the subliminal words here are for semi-transparent text that appears over the game while you play it and these phrases are mantras that appear over the completion progress bar for each level, again, as you play the game. Side note, I later noticed that if you go back and look at the very beginning of this file, you'll see that the first path here, if that even, is to a file, again, apparently, called general.txt. And the first section here, it looks like these mantra phrases are not really targeted towards any real life goals. Could this first file be the general.txt file? and the other paths allocated to the other files ahead of the general mantras? And could both the folder paths and the files ahead be in order? And also, maybe that gibberish text is part of a different type of file. After all, this thing might contain all of the image and audio assets used by the whole game, which extracts them dynamically. 
How does it do this? It could be these weird random characters between each of the file paths. These actually seem like they might be values telling the game how many bytes into the package the beginning and ending of all the game's asset files are, allowing the game to extract them to folders in the game's runtime cache. Which if not already there, the game might be creating folders based on the file paths. Now, they obviously don't look like numbers. However, there are other types of values. Ever heard of the hexadecimal system? All the numbers we're used to seeing have a radix of 10, because the single numbers go from 0 to 9. Hex values do something quite a bit different. They have a radix of 16, as rather than going from just 0 to 9, it adds the letters A through F, giving it a radix of 16, allowing values that are shorter in length to actually equal higher numbers, because these values look a bit short in length for standard numerical values. But these things don't even look like hex values. Far from just numbers and letters, so this could be an even higher radix made specifically to include other characters. I don't even know what possibility this would open, even for a two character value, because one, I don't know how wide the radix is, and two, a wider radix is just harder to wrap your head around to begin with. It will be at least kind of interesting to me to be able to read hex values, but I just don't have that skill yet. Anyways, enough kind of tangent. I'm going to modify one of these messages. Now, here's an issue with this. Because the game extracts these files based on exact values for how far in the file starting points are, these messages need to be exactly how long they were before, or else, the modification will crash Bejeweled 3. So, my choice is going to be this one, the third general phrase. I want this to show up fairly quickly, so I've come up with a phrase to replace it with. So instead of saying, I accept things change and end, I want to say, this can't be a letter off in length, which is obviously out of context. However, there is no doubt that it will make for a very interesting modification. Also, notice how I'm not putting a period here. This might seem like a grammar error, and seem to contradict to almost everything you've seen to this point really. However, the length of this message with a dot is simply one byte too long. As the message says itself, it can't be one byte too long or too short. It has to be a certain amount of characters long. No more and no less. Now, to actually see this change take effect, you will need to close the file to save it before opening the game. And before is a keyword here. You'll probably want to duplicate the file though, just in case it causes errors. Otherwise, the game will have already extracted and cached all the resources for loading them at the game's runtime, or in other words, while the game is running. Side note, there is a folder in the user library, which I think it might be putting there the first time you play the game. It actually does have sounds the game uses, so it actually extracts some of them only one time here, maybe just so it can open faster the following times, and not need to extract everything. The files here in this ambient folder are also for the game's zen mode, and these are ambient nature sounds you can have on while playing in zen mode. The sounds folder is for sound effects, like voices. So let's swap two of these around. Their file names, that is. The game looks for files with a specific name to load and play them in-game. So here, the player might think for a second that they've lost, due to having no more possible matches that you can swap two adjacent gems for. I wonder how it detects that. So now, let's try Zen Mode in this game as that's where both of my mods are. To see the specific changes that I made here, you'll have to click this sound wave looking icon here, then go to mantras, and enable it. I'm setting the speed to highest here, because this likes to go fairly slow. I mean, it's zen mode. I'm also leaving the mantra category drop down at general, because that's where the phrase I modded is. So now I'll carry on playing this while it cycles through the messages. Again. The one I modded is the third one, and this is the first one, and the second, and then, wait for it, this one. Um, what? This does not sound mantra-esque. This makes me think of how it's possible that these mods might make for stellar practical jokes. But now, let's finish this level. No more. 
What? Have I lost? Am I going to have to start a new game all over again? Uh, what in the world is going on here? It's like I completed this level. Is that what just happened? Because aren't I supposed to have been started over by now? It said no more moves. At least, the narrator. Also, if you do run out of moves, it will say you beat the level, and you'll probably expect that transition. However, your game in Mode X will end instead. So, let's try and see what those hieroglyphics are back down a bit. So here, I can see something familiar. OGG. Oh, I have seen audio files of this type in certain other games. OGG oh, is an HTML5 audio format. However, I don't know how long this file is. So let's try and select it from what point even? It looks like this flexible here might be part of it. However, it does make more sense to me that it might be a subliminal message like the above. Also, what's soundrangers.com? Maybe some kind of stock audio platform they used? So, from this point, I'm going to try and select all of this. And it turns out this is quite long. In fact, I had to scroll faster for quite a while before seeing this. So is this the end? I guess we'll find out. I'm going to copy this text, and what I have in mind now is to paste this into a file, turning it into an audio file that might be playable. Here is how you can do this. With text edit open, go to your menu bar and select File, New Document. This will create a new text file, except it's not plain text. It's in a more generous format called rich text. So, behind the scenes, it actually has other things stored in it as well as the text that you can edit at the top bar here. This includes fonts, colors, styles, and sizes. So, how do you make this the same format as the plain data that we saw earlier? It's actually quite simple. Go back to the menu bar and choose Format, then click the option that says Make Plain Text. Then, paste in the data you just copied. Now, save the file. This dropdown will show, as this is a new file. The one thing you need to make sure is the plain text encoding dropdown is set to the right option. These two Unicode UTF options here were total failed attempts, and probably will be if you try those. The one you really want to pick is Western macOS Roman. Also, make sure you add dot and then the file extension you want to save it as. And now it's kind of self-explanatory. Save the file to any location, and test out whether or not the file is playable. And here, it wasn't. So, maybe that's not quite the end. I then tried removing almost half of it from the end, and resaving it. Then, I tried to play it again, and this time, I actually do get a result. And this is an ambient zen sound. So I guess there's no need to be precise with the end, just make sure you hopefully don't pass anything. Speaking of which, at this point, it skipped ahead to the end. Could I have done this wrong? So, I tried reloading it and replaying it. And this time around, it does this at a certain point. It changes to a different sound. So these are really 30 second loops. And also, have I just run over the end of the first file? I guess, maybe. However, extracting this file in a slow enough way to actually be able to see that would be a pretty boring, slow, and tedious task. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, feel free to like it, share, and sub to my channel for more content. If you want to get notifications on new uploads, click on the bell icon after subscribing to my channel. I try to post new videos on Saturdays or Sundays. Also, to go to my channel, click on my icon or channel name just below the video. For any questions or requests you have, please let me know below in the comments. As always, thanks for watching.